We're beginning with a really, really simple idea here of if you take a function, you can work out its derivative, and this is no problem. I've referred to this before, right? So if I have a function, I know what its derivative is, no ambiguity, right? It's just going to be, well, this is just power function. You bring down the power, no big deal, okay? Now, if we had to go in reverse, right, this process of differentiation going from a function to the derivative, it doesn't quite work in reverse. It's a little bit like when you take, when you square a number and then you take the square root, right? For example, you start with five, right? You square it and then you take the square root. Okay, great, you come back to the original number, okay? However, this doesn't always work, right? If you take a number like negative five and then you square it and then you take the square root, you do not end back where you came from, right? You know something about it. You know the magnitude of that number. Uh, in other words, you know the absolute value of the number, but you actually don't know everything about it. Some information, namely the sign, has been lost when you went through this process. And differentiation is just the same. When we went from here, to here, we lost some information, right? And I can illustrate it in this way. Let's write underneath here. If we went in reverse, if what I knew was the derivative, okay, going back, clearly y equals x cubed could be the original function, okay? And uh, from now on, instead of saying original function, I'm just going to say primitive because that's what it means. It's where I came from, okay? It's reasonable to assume, okay, well y equals x cubed could be the primitive, okay? However, y equals x cubed flat is not the only primitive that I could have come from, right? I could have come from y equals x cubed plus any constant term over here, because when I do this differentiation step, that constant term is going to... Disappear. Yeah, it's going to vanish, right? It's gone, okay? So that corresponds to this information that gets lost, right? Now we can visually demonstrate this, and I'd love you to have a little graph underneath here. We can visually demonstrate this by showing that this is really part of a family of functions, a family of primitives, right? That are all off by a constant of some kind. Now it's really important that we mention that number is a constant. It's a pronumerable that stands for a number, not a variable, right? So therefore, on the end here, you either say where c is a constant, or if you're a bit lazy and you don't mind stomaching a little more notation, you say this, c is a real number as opposed to it's some variable that can float around and change. It's an actual number in that actual set of numbers, right? So this is my way of saying it's a number, not a variable, okay? So let's illustrate really quickly this family of functions, right? Y equals x cubed, the one we started with, we know what that looks like. It's going to look like this. Okay. Now, every other member in this family of primitives has exactly the same kind of shape, but it's off by a vertical shift. Do you see that? In fact, this C is really modifying the Y. It's not modifying the X at all. Okay? So for instance, if I had Y equals X cubed, I could very easily plot on here Y equals X cubed plus, well, you pick a number. Okay? Five. Five, that'll do. No. Y equals X cubed plus five, and there's my intercept, right? Now, what I want you to do is to remember when we looked at taking a graph Right? And then underneath, in, underneath it, drawing its derivative and its second derivative. Right? It's first and second derivatives. Did we ever ask any questions in terms of like, you know, when you do your greed for gradient, that kind of thing? Did we ever ask any questions about the position of the graph? No. And the answer is no. We're only ever interested in, oh, am I increasing? Am I increasing? Am I increasing? <coughs> right? I've got a stationary point, and just because of the graph I've chosen, it's increasing there as well. Okay? I don't care where up or down it is. I'm going to make exactly the same statement about the gradient here because their derivatives are exactly the same. And you can draw an infinite set of these kinds of um, primitives up and down uh, on your Cartesian plane. Okay? So therefore, what we want to do is we want to try and say, like this process here, this reversing differentiation, um, sometimes it's called anti-differentiation because you're undoing that process, right? We're really good at differentiation, right? We have all these rules that we've established for doing this, right? So it stands to reason if a rule takes me from here to here, some kind of rule ought to be able to take me in the opposite direction, okay? So new little subheading underneath this, rules for anti-differentiation. We're going to try and codify some of this. 
First, let's just rehearse a regular rule for differentiation since we know it so well. The one that we used here, right? So for instance, if y equals some power of x, right? x to the power of anything you like, okay? We know what the derivative is, right? Just like we did over here for the particular example of n equals 3, we bring that power down out the front, so the power, which is n, comes out the front, and then we reduce the power by 1, right? So you get your n, x to the n minus 1. No problem, okay? But now, if I go at this line here and start from the derivative, right? If I say, you know, I don't actually know what the original function was, but suppose this is the derivative. Where did I come from, right? What must have differentiated to get to this, right? And the answer is, well, you notice how we, let me say it again, we brought the power down at the front, and then we reduced the power by 1. There were two processes there, right? And because what I'm trying to do is reverse what I just did, I'm going to do those same two processes, but number one, I'm going to do the opposite, and I'm going to do them in reverse order. Okay, it's really important that I do both. Watch. For starters, I'm going to increase the power. Do you notice I had to decrease the power? So the first thing I'm going to do is increase the power, right? To differentiate, I decrease the power. To anti-differentiate, I increase the power, okay? That was only one of the steps, though. What was the other thing I did? Yeah, so here I multiply, so now I should divide, right? Now, in order to make sure I end up back here, right, I'm dividing by the new power, not the previous power, the new one, okay? Now, do you notice the order I did that in? It's really important. You do the power first, and then you do the division second, okay? Let me put that in. In fact, I'm encouraging you to do that as well. The power comes first and the division comes second. The reason why is because back here, the multiplication came first and then the power came second. You see, we're doing them in reverse order. If you do them the other way around, you won't get the right answer. Let me prove to you that this is the case, right? I can take this, right? I can differentiate this, differentiate it with respect to x. What's going to happen? Again, going through this process, I bring the power out the front, like so, and then I reduce the power by 1. Does that make sense? Yes? Do you see how I've, I've replicated that process? All over n plus 1, and just as we predicted, cancel, 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 there's my x to the n that I was supposed to end up with. Okay? We've one little problem. Remember? It's a family of primitives. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different option I, options I could have come from, right? So in addition to this guy, I should add a constant. Okay? And again, I'm gonna state, and I should state it every single time. This number has just appeared, right? I need to say what it is. It's an actual real number. Okay, it's a constant. Okay. That was fairly easy. In fact, that's the, that's the stock standard first rule that we learned, which corresponds to this. Let's see if we can push this a little further. We know how to do regular powers. What about, like, an extension of that was the um, chain rule. We, we know how to do the chain rule, right? Let me give you a really simple chain rule, okay? If y equals this kind of thing, right? So I've got a linear function raised to a power, okay? Just quickly, what's the derivative of this guy? Okay, I'm going to bring the end, the power down the front. Right? I'm going to reduce the power by one, like so. And then there's almost step, the chain rule step. I, I differentiate the inside function, right, which will just give me a. So that's a little bit messy. I'll tidy that up. Stick the a out the front. Okay, I'm going to give you a second to try and think carefully, and then verify, just like I did, if instead. This thing is my derivative. And I'm asking, where did this come from? What primitive was differentiated to land here? What would you do? Again, be careful. Do the opposite of the steps and do them in reverse order. I'll give you a tip. Here there were two steps. There were three in this one. Okay, Give it a shot. I'll give you a minute to think. Change which? Um, 
I'm imagining if this was my starting point, I don't want to go straight back to here because I know what that oh, answer is. Okay. So I don't want to pretend this is my oh, right. derivative. I want to pretend if it's this, and what must I do to that person? Okay. So let's think about this because we can think slowly as to whether this works or not, right? And let me try and, let me try and highlight this for you, right? There were three steps. Three steps, okay? Watch as I differentiate this original function. Okay, watch, right? Number one, I brought the, t the power down, right? Number two, I reduced the power by one. And number three, I, I differentiated the inside. Okay, tell me what I'm actually doing, okay? Now let me look at those and I'm gonna do them in reverse, okay? I'm gonna go from three, right? I multiply by A, so here I'm dividing by A. I uh, wait, why did you multiply by decrease the power, uh, there, uh, there, A. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I multiply by a, so I'm going to divide by a. Step two, which I'm doing in reverse, right? I decrease the power. So here I increase the power. And then my last step was a multiplication, so now I'm dividing. Now that's a bit messy. I can tidy it up, okay? Let me finish just by saying this, right? Here's the process, right? And I'm not going to finish it for the chain rule one. We will have a look at that on Friday, okay? But if I start from here, right? Differentiating, we know what to do with that. This is differentiating. Right? To climb back up the ladder, to do anti-differentiation, right? we're doing all those processes in reverse, and importantly, we're adding the constant on. I guess another way of thinking about that is when I differentiate, I remove any constants. Right? They just sort of disappear. Okay? One last piece of notation that you need is you guys know we all often call this f, which would lead to us calling this f dash, right? Well, you kind of need something to talk about that one where you came from, and you can't really, you can't really undash something, right? So what they do is, and unfortunately, dots end up actually functioning exactly like dashes. So here is the convention, just so that you um you don't have to use it, but you need to recognize it. This guy up here is generally called capital F. Right? 